Welcome to Night's Arcade, I'm Sleepless Night, and a couple of weeks ago I spoke to Warhorse PR manager Toby about the studio's upcoming game, Kingdom Come Deliverance 2. After which, I uploaded a heavily edited video of the interview with the intention of getting right down to the Q&A for those who have no time at all for myself and Toby going off on all sorts of tangents. And I promised my community that I would upload the unedited, or almost unedited version of the interview, if enough people requested it. Well, you spoke, I listened, and the extended version is coming right up as requested. But for anyone coming here hoping to learn more about the game than was mentioned in the original edit of this interview, I should warn you that there will be no further info about the game than was mentioned in the edited version. What follows is mostly additional chat about the fans and how valued they are by Warhorse, about Toby himself, and a few other random bits. So, now that you've been so warned, let's get on with it, shall we? Hello, welcome to Night's Arcade. I'm Sleepless Night, and today I am here with Sir Toby, PR manager for Warhorse. I quite often just call him Tobes. Um, he, he probably drives him <laughs> mad, but he's never told me that he doesn't like it, so uh, I just keep calling him. Welcome to the it's Arcade, o- Toby. It's okay, Nighty. All good. Yeah, thank you for the invitation. Uh, invitation. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, and it's uh, good to be back, actually. Yeah, good. It's it's really really good to have you back. I've I've spoken mm. a lot more to Roxy recently than you know. We've been chatting backwards and forwards for years, but lately, because we're all sort of we're both sort of night owls in the middle of the night while we're editing, I'll send her a message and go, "Oh, how about this?" So uh, it's <laughs> we're both really excited. Obviously, everybody's really excited. I've seen dozens more videos. Um, on YouTube about Kingdom Come Deliverance, people replaying the original now, mm-hmm. so it's absolutely fantastic. I've got mm-hmm. a few questions for you, and I know oh, that God. some of these you won't necessarily be able to answer, but I've also asked my community on Discord to see if they've got questions for you. So, uh, oh, before we start, I know you've told me this before, you told mm-hmm. me this story before, but just for the benefit of everybody else, how did you start working at Warhorse? Uh, I'm actually, we have now end of April, uh, so uh, I'm almost 10 years at Warhol Studios. It, I, I, I forgot if, if I started in May or in June, but I should ask uh, uh, HR. So I'm 10 years at Warhol now, um, and the way how I started, I actually studied journalism here in Prague, and um, the idea was that, well, I originally I'm from Germany, which you can most likely hear from my accent. But my mom is Czech, so I, I thought I'm clever and uh, do my foreign studies in Czech Republic in a country where I uh, uh, can speak the language already. So I went here and the master plan was I study journalism here and then go back to Germany and actually start to work as a journalist. But um, yeah, for the first time I lived alone, Czech beer, Czech women, and I never returned back to Germany. So um, that, that's that's the short part of the story. But then um, I, I'm not able to write in Czech. So when I'm writing email, which is funny as a press speaker or PR manager, when I write Czech emails, I write them exactly as I hear them, which is almost always wrong. Um, so it was very hard to find a job for me here uh, in, in, in some media outlet here in Czech Republic. I worked for some German ones, but it didn't work out at the end. And um Everything looked like I have to go back to Germany, finally, after all, because I ran out of money, kind of. And almost last second, I'm in the apartment building where I was living. I met some bearded dude who stepped into the elevator saying, hey, do you live here? And I said, yes, of course, I'm living on the top. He said, yeah, hey, my name is Daniel Vavra. And I was looking at him like, uh, I, I, I saw this guy somewhere, but I have absolutely no idea. So I went up to my apartment, I Googled Daniel Vavra, it sticked to my mind, and then it jumped on me like a uh, famous creator of, uh, the creative director of Mafia 1 and Mafia 2, and he now started Warhol Studios, and there's this Kickstarter project and so on. So I said, okay, video games it is. Uh, I'm a huge video game nerd, more of the older games, like Super Nintendo Times, that's right up my alley but i thought well i have nothing to lose right so um i was looking uh what kind of what kind of job offers they had 
but they they were mainly looking for programmers and stuff uh, and uh, stuff like that. Nothing for me, but at one night, like I don't know, it was like Thursday evening, ten p.m., something like that. Uh, they were looking for a community manager, so I said, "Let's get dressed, print out my CV." I went down <laughs> the stairs, I knocked on his door, and said, "Well, first his wife came out and said, who are you?" And said, ah, "Hi, can I speak to Daniel, please?" And Daniel came in his undies, like, "Hey, what's up?" I said, "Hey, I know, <laughs> I know exactly who you who you are, and I love what you do. Here's my CV." Uh, so he laughed at me, said it's shitty paid, and I said, "Well, I'm a freelance journalist, so <laughs> at least that part I I excel in. So the sh- getting shitty payment. So uh, and a f- few months or weeks later, I started as a community manager in May or June 2014, um, and a year later, uh, I was promoted to PR manager, and I do that since then. So nine years of press speaking and. Pretty much all the communications work at at Warhol Studios. Wow, cool! Because I, I think uh, I think Rick was the first person I spoke to over there, like way back in 2018. I think this mm-hmm. was, but he was the first person that I think. Yeah, uh, Rick was my wingman, so uh, we then grew a little bit. And Ring uh, Rick was uh, he's now at Mad Fingers, uh, yeah, yeah, who are presenting a, a new game, uh, Gray Zone Warfare. So check it out, everyone. Check game. We have to there support you go, each other. There you go. Um, right. But um, um, uh, he he became something like a co-pilot uh, for me. He's American, and so it was good that mm. he, I was working on the Czech or Central European time zone. He was working on the American time zone, so it was a good combo. Yeah, yeah. No, I can I can relate to a lot of that. When I started, when I started, uh, I moved to Stockholm, and I couldn't get a job for ages. I applied for hundreds of them, and then one as a tour guide. And of course, they wanted English speakers. But when I went for the interview, they said. Mm-hmm can you speak Swedish? Because, <laughs> you know, the whole course, it's a three month, every day, five days a week course, full time to learn to tour people around Stockholm. Can you speak Swedish? But I needed a job. So I just said, uh, yep. Uh, and then I went to the course with a with a tape recorder and then I recorded everything. And what I couldn't understand, my Swedish wife, girlfriend and I, my wife, um, mm-hmm. translated for me. So I did the whole course again at nights and weekends with her <laughs> listening and explaining. So... I know what it's like to try and get a job where you move to another country. Right, let's start. Wiggle, wiggle your way in. Wiggle I know, your right? way to the top. Yep. <laughs> you do the do the best that you can. Right, let's, we're going to start with some easy questions that I'm pretty sure you won't have any problems answering. Some of them I've seen already answered since I wrote these out. But uh, firstly, let's a dead easy one. Is Savior Schnapps still a thing in Kingdom Come 2? So I, I'm really surprised how how people are asking me this like as if it was a bad thing i mean i, I understand that, that there's a love hate relationship uh, around the savior schnapps but the before i answer l- l- let me let me tell you about the the idea behind the savior schnapps so generally yeah. what 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 we tried to come up with is a is a system that um, encourages you to think a bit more about uh, your decisions and the the whatever you do in the game, that you get even more immersed, that you ask yourself, should I or should I not do this or that? Because there's a limited amount of savior schnapses and uh, I should like really um, value them for what they are. But meanwhile, we of course understand that uh, the KCD1 was at least on, on, on release very buggy. So it could have crashed on you even and and then you have the progress lost or we checked out the the most famous uh uh, the most famous or one of the most famous um uh, mods for kcd was of course the savior uh, unlimited savior schnapps thing so it's it's not like we don't we don't know that it was a love hate thing but now to answer yes it comes back it will be again the savior schnapps but with all the systems in the game we learned from KCD1 and tried to improve them some way or another, right? Not revolutionize them, but for instance, the Savior Schnapps, there's not much to improve there. The thing is that we want to make it more accessible. So in KCD1, especially in the beginning of the game, the Savior Schnapps was very expensive. It was scarce. It was hard to get by. and that was. But also that was the part where you needed to save most because you were weak. Kind of. So that yeah. is, of course, the lessons learned. So Savior Schnapps will return. It will be easier to get. But still what we want is this minimum investment you have to do of yep. using an item 
to just like reconsider should I safe scam myself into that chest or not? <laughs> and if you do that, fine for you. Have this investment. But um, that's the philosophy behind the Savior Schnapps. I uh, personally, I never had a problem with it, really. I mean, certainly past the first three, four hours after that, I didn't find it a problem at all. Um, and what I'm pleased to see, actually, is that when I made my KCD, my own KCD announcement video, when the mm -hmm. release uh, was announced last week. Um, it was, I by the way, a very few... nice video. Thank you very much. You should, I got you should quite know. A few... Yeah. You, you should you should know, same with all the other content creators, that for us at Warhol Studios, I mean, of course, it was apparently something big for you guys out there, for the community, for the content creators and so on, who are fans of KCD, that finally mm -hmm. KCD is back. But this goes, that's a double-edged sword. The, the same feeling goes inside the studio. You need to consider that there's, we worked on this. So the last release was 2018. So between 18 and now it's almost six years. Well, the development started in 2019 or so, but having this period of five years where you can't talk about this <laughs> very exciting been... thing is is really hard. And there's some people like us, like me, who worked on the first part and can kind of like live with the fact, okay, there will be a second part, so I can wait. But then we have a huge bunch of new people, young guys who came into the studio for who's this the first maybe job even, and they can't talk about what they're doing. No, I and know. So so this this 18th of April was a huge relief for Insight. And why I started to talk about this, they, of course, hear the, the day of announcement, even the, the week before when we do, did the teaser shows, uh, the teaser pictures yeah. uh, on, the, on, 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 on Twitter and so on, on Facebook. Uh, I, I don't think... There was much work done on the Fridays after because after the teaser, everyone was looking here and sharing pictures about speculations and people talking about it. <laughs> and the yeah, Friday, Friday the nineteenth, after the announcement of of KCD two, everyone was sharing YouTube videos and pictures and discussions and Reddit's and everything because they are extremely fucking excited excited yeah. that they can finally. Tell their oh, listen, what they do. I only had to keep this secret for a week, and it drove. Well, I mean, okay, you contacted you contacted most of us before that to say we've got a new game, and it was only obviously <laughs> the week before that we found out what it was. But as you said yourself, probably one of the mm -hmm. worst kept secrets in because we all kept, we all knew what it was going to be, but we couldn't. <laughs> You know, we couldn't it's, talk about it. It's so, it stays it stays an assumption as long as we don't. Uh, yeah, uh, say what it is. So, quite right. Fine for me. <laughs> quite right. Right. Has now we see in the trailer there that um, I think one thing that really st stood out to a lot of people was that the, there's one player POV shot where there's hammering of molten metal. So we're assuming ha has the blacksmithing mechanic improved in the game? You've expanded it, I assume. Mm, so blacksmith. Well. It were improved. It wasn't in there in KCD one. So, uh, hmm. and that is one well, of the yeah. things that was that was unfortunately. Uh, so, of course, the idea was to have it in KCD one already. You are the son of a blacksmith after all. But there, in the end, where we had to do the decisions where to cut, this was one of the things that had to just go. Unfortunately, uh, just out of time and resource reasons. So now in KCD two, first of all, you will, you will meet everything or like feature wise i mean uh you are uh, you already know from kcd1 plus there's a few extensions and a few few additions and one of the additions is the blacksmithing mini game of course i don't want to go too deep into details there but um if you know how we do the uh, if you can remember how we do the um uh, alchemy system where you have course, like, yeah. pour in the drink and then turn the hourglass and and fire yeah, the yeah. bellow or whatever so if you can remember that, then you can expect uh, the kind of level of fidelity we put into the blacksmithing as well. So okay. this will, will be cool. Excellent. I'm looking forward to that. On a similar mm -hmm. line is lock now. All right. The early lock picking system in KCD1, I talked about it in mm -hmm. my 2018 review originally a little bit because the, the, the first 
one on consoles at least, or at least using a controller, probably not so much mouse and keyboard, but using a controller, whether you were on PC or console, was maddening. And it improved dramatically just the little quick fix that you dropped, I think, what, within a week, I think, something mm-hmm. like that. With Pretty fast it came. So is I'm assuming that lockpicking is going to be in, you know, it's mm-hmm. an RPG yeah. after all, very few of them without lockpicking these days. But is it similar to the way it was at the end of the last KCD, or have you expanded or improved it or developed it more than that? Exactly, as you said. Uh, so lessons learned, kind of. So we... and. As you mentioned already, we improved it in KC1. So in one of the hot fixes, or maybe even some of the uh, DLCs, I, I don't know right now exactly at what point of, of the uh, development cycle we added. Um, and we, we improved it for one, and then also added for people who played on controller, something we call it easy mode. It really maybe it's not the right name for it, but originally we wanted the for someone who who plays on the controller that he has to uh, move the sticks uh, clockwise in a different speed which sounds nice on paper but then in real life (laughs) we found out that it's apparently harder than we thought it is so now you turn the or we even even in kcd1 you you turn the lick with uh, um, you turn the lock with a click on the button and then have to move just with one thumb so it should be easier but it's pretty much what it is exactly like uh, as it was expected, at the end, uh, as it was in KCD one exactly. Right, okay. And but again, and I might, might repeat that several times today, we tried to make everything smoother, the feeling better, the um, more, um, yeah, yeah, the feeling should be generally better with everything you do, right? So uh, the lock picking is something that also should give you a better feeling when you do it, do it. So excellent. Right, so now we're going to get on to a couple of the more tricky questions that you might... I'm I'm expecting you'll have to just sort of blow past most of these and say, I can't mm-hmm. answer that, or wiggle your way around it in that PR manager kind of way that you've become <laughs> accustomed to. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, one of the things that everybody's talking about that, I, I'll be honest, I didn't notice. I was so focused on other things when I watched the reveal and everything that I didn't notice until one of my viewers pointed this out to me and I went, oh my god, yeah, of course it is. Father Godwin, right? We can... It seems to me that he's clearly visible in the trailer, particularly um, the bit that stuck out for me when I rewatched it was what I've what I've started calling the arsonist's prayer that he does at the end. Mm-hmm. But what's worried a lot of people is that they said, well, wait a second, because, you know, the voice, not only is the voice different, the accent's different. Now, I've spoken to a couple of people about this because I'm a voiceover artist. I've, well, I'm actually in my audio booth today doing this. I'm a voiceover artist myself. I know that voiceover is one of the last things generally that is done uh, in the development of a game such as this. Uh, it's possible that it's a placeholder or maybe he wasn't available or maybe if he's featured more heavily, um, the Randall, I can't remember his name, the, the first guy, but, um, mm-hmm. you know, can you, can you talk about that at all? Is it the same actor? Sure. Is, is he in it? So I, I, of course, uh, if, if I don't want to take the fun of everyone, so, uh, go through the, go through the trailer and try to figure out who, who is in there and, and and so on but i think it's just an assumption that it's a different voice actor maybe it sounds different from from the scene that he's in uh to my knowledge it's this it's the same dude who is who's voice acting father godwin and the face of father godwin is actually the father the real life father of daniel vavra so oh, right. okay. the creative director so th- that's <laughs> daniel's dad there and um <laughs> the voice actor should be the same but as you saw that as you saw in the trailer, we will be introduced to Godwin in a way different, under way different circumstances yeah. than uh, yeah, we the, the warrior priest we remember from Kingdom Come Deliverance one. Hopefully, mm. but we'll 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 see. I, won't well, I don't want to delve too that. deep into the no, no, of course, story parts. But uh, yeah, where I mean, we clearly <laughs> saw him in the in the trailer, right? Okay, so these are, these are getting gradually tricky now. Does. I'm I'm not expecting much of an answer for this one, but I've got to, I've got to ask it anyway. Does KCD two take place over a similar sort of time span as the first one, or can we expect a passage of some considerable time between the beginning and the end of the game? 
Again, I, I, I will not talk too much about story, but what I can yeah. definitely say is that KCD2 starts exactly where KCD1 ended. Yeah. So you're kind of right in the sunset uh, with uh, with Hans Kapon and and uh, and a gang of, of soldiers, and you come out of the sunrise or whatever in KCD2. That's where everything starts. But about story-wise, I will not uh, spoil anything, of course. But what is very important, and I'm not sure if you will ask that or not, but let me just put this here because I feel like this could be the right moment. The way how we try and um, um, design Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 and write uh, KCD and the way how we make all the systems more accessible, um, it's 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 done in the way so that it's that you don't have to know KCD1 in order to appreciate KCD2. So you don't need to know the first game in order to be able to play the second game and know where you are and what to do. So in the beginning of KCD2, it will will slightly bring you up to speed. We will give you the bare minimum of information that you will need. That's it. Feel free. Uh, open world RPG. There you go. But uh, if you know KCD1, of course, the feeling might be richer, but that is just as with all uh, sequels. Yeah, as with all, all franchises, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm not expecting an answer to this one at all, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Will we get to play as Hans Capon at any part of this game? Well, let's let's not ask story questions anymore because okay. otherwise I will have not. I will. <laughs> we will just look at each other and now. Nah, but seriously, so what we? I think the announcement in itself. I think we re- revealed a lot of things there, and we did this on purpose. Uh, we had a very big announcement show of what fifteen minutes or so, because mm. we we um. And this is partially leaned towards the thing I said in the beginning. For us, it's also a big thing, a big thing as much as it is for you. So we want to sh- we wanted to show you quite a hefty announcement trailer with a lot of info or, or announcement video with a lot of information with the music with the boomsticks with the crossbows and so on and so on the only thing that we do not spoil yet is the story parts yeah, so yeah. features features are in there and new additions are in there some things we know from I, KCD are in there but the I story assume is... when you're making these trailers there are things that you that are intentionally put in to get people speculating i've got to assume that's that's the case right yeah but i wouldn't yes of course just but... not necessarily to but like the reveal trailer you know you mm-hmm. like when you showed the photo of of tom on the horse mm-hmm. there like i as someone who was let in a little bit early it was mm-hmm. fun for me to sort of watch people going off in all tangents, mm-hmm. and I can't believe you didn't do that on purpose. <laughs> to, to, it yeah, was, more... of course, on purpose, but yeah. it was a tease for the announcement trailer. Yeah. I think I, I wouldn't go so far as too fast to say that we deliberately put a, someone on on a false track because we have fun of fun with it. At least not in a trailer. And this like official official thing. But with teasers, that's what you do with teasers, right? Yeah, you yeah, tease of something course, yeah. and then. Let's see what the people are doing with it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Right. There was um, Prokop. Uh, Prokop, you have said, did um, an interview with uh, Indian, I think, not mm-hmm. long ago, when he talks uh, about how you'll see the end mm-hmm. of the story here. Now, mm-hmm. my the way I interpret that from having read bits here and there is that Dan Vavra really wanted to make his idea as very much of a Star Wars story, I think his idea was to make a game in three acts originally, if I have that right. And of course, resources, Mm -hmm. time, you know, you could only end up making the first act. So consequently, of course, people expected that there would be an act two and an act three as separate games. Mm -hmm. So my interpretation of this tell me if I'm well if you can tell me if I'm right I probably can't but is that with KCD2 having two locations and two maps I'm assuming that what that is featuring as act two and three of the original well, story let, 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 let me answer differently um so you're absolutely right with everything you said uh, about the Kickstarter and so on the original idea was uh that or the original idea of Daniel and the Kickstarters right before I started at Warhol Studios, um, that we do a game 
that will be cut into three parts, act one, two, three. And those three parts each were about, should should have been around 20 hours of gameplay. Hmm. And the idea was we release one, and after after one year will be the second, after the third year will be the third act. However, this was this idea was overthrown really quickly after the success of the Kickstarter. And when they had to really think about, okay, where should we put the scissors? Where where do we do the cuts? Where do they make sense? Uh, what do we keep for the next? And we really, really quickly abandoned this idea for an act one, two, three. And we tried to communicate that. Apparently not good enough, but that's fair right. because this floats in the air for 10 years already. <laughs> yes. So um, really, let, let's abandon this idea of one, two, three, act one, two, three, mm. because we today I can't tell you what exactly was supposed to no, be no. one. Yeah. Act one, act two is if this is act, if Cassidy one was act one and two, and this is might maybe act three, four, five. I don't know. These things are really not. <laughs> yeah, it, it, but yeah, I understand. They idea. they evolve. But, things change. Yeah. You know, yes. So Cassidy one became a with all the DLCs and almost one hundred one hundred hours game, which is already yeah. way more than was promised on Kickstarter or what what the original idea was. And KC do two, as Prokop said, should be should offer a ending. What kind of ending is something to find out then later, of course. Okay. But it, it's no worries of something. Right. I'm not gonna obviously. I'm not gonna ask you for a specific date. I, I'm to be honest. I'm assuming you probably don't even know for sure yet but how confident <laughs> are you guys at warhorse that this will release in 2024 so i don't need a date i just want to know how confident you all are that this will release this year oh well, extremely confident but you never know things can happen yeah we were course. we didn't and, and and this might sound like excuse or something but COVID made us develop the yeah. game longer the war in ukraine is doesn't help generally on the markets everything is these these things have in have have um uh, impacts on on game development so never say never but fingers crossed knocking on wood uh okay. want to absolutely release this year that is the the entire team is working towards uh not maybe we release this year but absolutely we release this year but Things can happen, but let's yeah, hope this. Of course. Well, that's why I phrased it that way. I didn't want to say, you know, will it? I just like, what is your confidence level? That is really? our confidence. The entire team is uh, drilled to the fact that we want to release later this year. And everyone mm. knows that. Everyone is happy with that. Everyone is fine with that. And it's full steam ahead. The, what I can tell you already is that the game is in a very, very, very good stage. In a very good stage. And we are entering the part where we are optimizing, bug fixing, adding localizations and these kind of stuff. So we are at a way different situation than we were with KCD1, right? At the same Absolutely. time before release. So yeah, yeah. I'm very optimistic here. That, I do think, and uh, I think... I think the general feeling of people in the KCD community has been that they, you know, regardless of all the, of all the grief that we've given you over the last six years, that <laughs> we, we, the general consensus seems to be that we like the way that you've done this, that you didn't four years ago, start teasing images and things like this. And no mm. matter how much pressure people like me and Roxy, especially have really, yeah. really kind of put on you that you've, that you've kept it quiet and which must've been extremely difficult, as you said, for all of you. And that I'm, yeah, I, I'm you've also done it very, this way, I think. I'm also convinced that while it was hard for everyone and yes, Roxy was, was constantly, uh, pushing me to say at least something so that we know, but <laughs> I'm I'm convinced that the way how we did it, again, while it hurt a little bit because everyone wants to know that's the nature of people. Everyone yeah. is, we want to see and know everything. But what do you do with the information once you know? So uh, we wanted to talk about it as much as you wanted to hear about it. However, we wanted to feel more comfortable. And have a product that is presentable, showable, that we can have this kick-ass trailer, that we can do this announcement, that we can show you all the features, or many of them. Um, 
and not end up in a situation like we did with uh, KCD1 where, but it was due to Kickstarter, of course, but the game was announced in 2014 and we yeah. had to constantly remind everyone what this game is about four years in a row until 2018 <laughs> when it finally released. So, and not only is it kind of hard to keep the hype alive, it was okay because the KCD was exciting enough that people jumped on it over and over and over again, but the the um, quality improvements and the while it sounds good that, oh, look, it looks better than it looked 30, uh, like one year ago or something like that, the internet never forgets. So you have those old images floating around that with an yeah. ugly Henry and ugly whatever and an old logo and I don't know what, while you want to show the present the new stuff that, and, and kind of tell, okay, listen, what you saw there, forget everything because now it looks this way and please delete all those pictures. We will new, use these pictures. Now. That is really annoying. And, and we wanted to have the game in a almost ready in an almost state, complete almost really almost ready complete state. state and be confident that whatever we are showing you is like almost it we are almost there pr pretty so. much what you can expect yeah right okay i do have a few questions that i promised i would ask uh, mm -hmm. from my discord community uh, and a couple from you know comments on youtube and things just because they're usually ones that a few people have asked so i thought i'd ask mm -hmm. um this is a common one. This has come up quite a lot. It didn't even occur to me to ask this, but quite a few people have asked, do you start from scratch or will your game decisions carry over from Kingdom Come Deliverance? Um, I think that's a general problem with um, with uh, sequels, right? So yeah. you kind of, of course, want to keep... When you play a game, you want to have a character that you can teach something that can learn something and that that you keep this progression thing right it would be i think boring if let's imagine kcd1 would be all about leveling up henry and in kcd2 you don't level anything anymore so of course you need to find a solution to make it somehow believable and somehow explain it so in in our case it's not like henry fell on the head and forgot everything but still there are there's something that happened that makes him not start all over again, but let's that that forces him to to develop further in a way. Plus, you need to also consider the way how we designed both games. KCD one is really um kinda about quarrels of of rural landscapes between like some local lords and bailiffs and I don't know what, and they are fighting bandits most of the time. Now with KCD2, KCD uh, Henry's entering a way bigger stage. Uh, he's yeah, yeah. getting into a, not own well, he's getting torn into a conflict between kings. Yeah, bigger stage with bigger fighters, with bigger knights, and so on. And imagine it like you were the champion of your local village competition, and now you have to go into international competition, kinda, or na in, into the national championship or yeah. something like that. And all of a sudden, you're not. <clears throat> Uh, the, not the strongest uh, anymore, but you are now among even stronger people. So we tried to explain this somehow, incorporate that, and give you a chance to experience another full-fledged RPG and and uh, go from that point. Excellent. Make it believable. Yeah. Excellent answer. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Right. Rue asks, uh, will we be able to travel back and forth between the two maps of KCD2 as we please, or does Region 1 become locked at some point? Mm -hmm. Good question. So exactly as you said, two maps uh, will be in the game. You start at Trotsky because we remember this from KCD1. They yeah. send you with this letter uh, letter of hope uh, to, to the local lord, and you are asking him actually if he's on your side or the side of the invading king. And then reasons will drag you to Kuttenberg through the second map. Uh, um, but it will be story-wise, so the story brings you to the second map. But once you arrive there, you can, of course, backtrack and, of course, travel back to, uh, the, to the Trotsky map and finish side quests or whatever you want to do there or just walk around. Because the Trotsky map will be more of a, say, Landscapey, uh, yeah, like yeah. like rural map. You have the uh -huh. 
it, it's called Bohemian Paradise. That's the an Bohemian actual Paradise. area area here in Czech Republic. So it's like with all the big sandstone formations yeah, yeah. and so on. And Kuttenberg will be a way more urban area with silver, a huge town, Kuttenberg itself, silver mining area and so on, with some villages and, and, and cities and, and so on around it. So this will be cool. But uh, what we want to offer is you uh, like uh, is a more diverse landscape. Yeah, thingy. yeah of course. And, uh, as a matter of fact, the only loading screens we have in KCD uh, two will be when you start the game and when you travel between those two maps because they're in real life they are kind of a hundred kilometers Ooh, apart yeah. from each other. <laughs> so we need to kind of uh, explain stuff and you actually travel there. So it's it's kind of neat. Excellent. Uh, right, you touched on this a little bit before with one of the previous answers, but Vlad asks, how did the progression system evolve from the first game? Are there any major changes, or is it similar to the first game but expanded? Mm, it's very similar to the first game but expanded, exactly as Vlad suggested. So it, still, it's, the, it's a system, the more you do something, the better you get at it. So, I don't know, sword fighting, you will become a better sword fighter. Horse riding, you will level up the horse riding skills and so on. So that's still in there. But uh, we revamped the things or the, the way how we um, how we work with the perks, for instance. So the, the perk system will also get, they will be just deeper, more interesting, more, more thoughts behind it and so on. Uh, but pretty much it's the same as always, but in kind of evolution of it. Excellent. So again... But this is, as I said, with all the features, we try to make it more accessible, more interesting, more intricate, and just expand on most of the things. Excellent. Mm -hmm. uh, right, this is from one of my YouTube commenters, just because, again, uh, quite a few people ask this. Why? I don't know. But it seems to be <laughs> something people want, so we'll ask. Oh, Coastal God. Terrorist okay. on YouTube asks, will, will there be fishing in KCD2? That is a good question. I don't even know. You don't even know. <laughs> you <laughs> right, got okay. me. Okay. So uh, <laughs> I, I, I guess not. But okay, not as far may, as you know. May, maybe, maybe some developer will storm in now that it's that this video is on YouTube and will tell me, "Oh, Toby, <laughs> of course it's in there." But okay. I am not aware of it at the moment. No. All right. Several people have asked. Mm. Um, besides the people that we've seen in the trailer um mm -hmm. you know henry hans istvan mark Rutt. can we expect they're not asking you to name names they're just saying can can we expect any other familiar faces from kcd1 to appear i let's let let me answer slightly differently you can absolutely expect a huge variety uh, of people mm -hmm. a bigger variety of people a bigger variety of, of even historical people that will appear in kcd2 yeah, and um, yeah, if we if we meet someone from KCD one, nice. But if not, then also nice because, as I said, we want to offer a huge new story with a lot of elements in there. Kuttenberg, which is in itself a relatively metropolitan city, so it attracts a lot of like m more diverse people and yeah. so on. So I think. Um, yeah, a bit of both, kind of. We, of course, will meet people from KZ1, but we will, of course, meet... Yeah, I, I did have a think about this when they asked, and one of the, it goes back to one of the earlier questions, which was one of... Because I thought, well, Ulrich, it seems like Ulrich was sent by the Rosenbergs, you know, Heinrich mm -hmm. von Rosenberg was one of part of the League of Lords, but then I thought, well, but there was an option to kill Ulrich in the first games. He couldn't really... As far as, as far as I can see, you couldn't really bring him back because you're not mm -hmm. carrying your save across. But then people like uh, John of Liechtenstein, um, who was sent to Kuttenberg, I think, if I remember from the end of KCD1, where you went mm -hmm. to Trotsky. Uh, so, right, Geggs asks, I actually know the answer to this already. It's been answered. <laughs> um, Prokop, uh, again, answered it, I think. Um, and I can completely understand why. With the answers that he gave, I thought, oh, that makes sense. But Geggs asks, will there be NPC children in this one? Yeah, so the answer is no. And mm -hmm. there's there's many reasons behind that. Yeah. Some are the some are obvious, some are not so obvious. Most of them sound like excuses, but it's it's not an excuse. It's really just if we so it, 
So one one of them is of course age rating. If you have children, yeah. if you can kill them or whatever, this is a problem in itself. So this has an Im impact on age rating. We don't want that problem at all. Then again, it would make the game more immersive, of course, which is an arguable that is true. If there would be children, it absolutely makes more sense and it would be more immersive, of course. But uh, in order to have smaller NPCs running there, you need a new set of animations. You need to, you can't just shrink, um, let's say, Human, yeah, male or female yeah. or uh, walking style and make the big, the head bigger or whatever, and then just hope it works. You need a new, completely whole new set of clothes. And so there's a huge scale of combat. So what happens if you attack them? They need to run away. They need to voice voice acting. You need hundreds and of hours of voice acting again. So this is a huge, it's not just like switch on or off. It's, there's yeah. a huge bunch of jobs and tasks behind it. And the question at the end of the day is, and that's the job of Martin Klima, Klima or the executive producer, do we do this? Or do we do these, or do we make these features way better? Or do yeah. we bug fix more? Or do we add, I don't know what, yeah. crossbow shooting or whatever? So at the end, it, it, that's that's the regular development kind of whatever you do, no matter if it's video games or building a house or whatever. Either you want 15 towers in there or you just are okay with one tower, but everything else will be just way better. So Of course. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, it's a good answer. I, I I was behind it with the question until I watched uh, another answer to the same question. Uh, Aku asks, <laughs> nice, are bushes, are bushes still impenetrable objects of madness? Uh, so I think... I don't, re I don't really know how you're supposed to answer that. So on. Let's, let's see. The bushes of hell... <laughs> if they if they will come back or not, but it, it, there's there's if if stuff like this is in the game, there's always thinking and reasoning behind it. It's not like someone has fun just putting the collision on. There's no, usually a problem obviously. like getting stuck inside or something like this. So if if there might have been reasons why this was better, and who knows how we will do it, how we will solve this. But these kind of things are really something for the optimization part later, yeah, of course, in development. Daniel Rademeyer on YouTube asks, do you know, I don't suppose you would, but do you know if there will be mouse and keyboard support for Xbox? I don't know, honestly. So no. we, I, we, we, we will utilize everything possible controller-wise. So, of course, the PlayStation controller should be supported as is. It has all these little gimmicks and features and so on. So that would should be somehow in there. But as far as I know, mouse and keyboard for I'm not aware of it. But okay. that doesn't mean yes or no. It doesn't mean it isn't. Yes, that right. is something I would have to find out with the uh, with the uh, programmers. Okay, we've got just a couple of questions left. So uh, several people have asked me, can you swim in Kingdom Come Deliverance 2? No, but in this... Uh, but uh, uh, Hans Capon wants to go swimming with uh, with uh, uh, Henry. So I think of that course, what made as, people as you, ask. As you could see, he was very hesitant, and uh, Henry doesn't magically learn how to swim, at least not in this cutscene. Okay, Foxer asks. Uh, oh right, okay. What can you tell us about mod support for KCD two, if anything? How much more accessible will it be for modders? Mod is something. Mods are something that we are not discussing yet. It's just too early to know at this moment. What we do know is that the mod system came too late for KCD one. So yep. if we do it, it will be faster. But there's no precise plans yet. First, we need to release the game, kinda. Yep, absolutely. Uh, GW asks. I mean, this, this seems like a no-brainer to me. Will there be any big battles in KCD two? Mm -hmm. But still, KCD... I know you can't elaborate on that, but yeah. yeah. But but what what is important? Just to like yes, but uh, the answer is yes. But uh, KCD two will be at parts similar to KCD one in the in the way of thinking and on, in the way of how we do the games and how we how we develop and and, and design the quests and and the story beats. So. The big battles is not something that you randomly can trigger. You just decide, let's conquer this thing and let's attack. It's it's not. No, it's all story related. It's not, yeah. yeah, it's not a total war kind of game. So, 
if stuff like this happens, then it's story driven. And of course, as I said, Henry is getting torn into a way bigger stage. So things will be deeper, darker, more epic. So of course, this is something that will be cool. Okay. Excellent. Last question from the community then. Gegs, once again, we all know Gegs. In the KCD community, we all mm -hmm. know Gegs. Bless him. He's, he's yet another Warhorse Whisperer. Mm. What new mini games? You've sort of touched on this before with the blacksmithing thing. What new mini games can we expect, if any, to see in KCD2? Well, we touched on upon the, the blacksmithing, which I think is the biggest thing I want I can I can uh, uh, disclose right now. But we also saw, for instance, the uh, Fargo, the dice mini game uh, yeah. in the in the in the um, teaser or in the trailer or in the announcement. And as I said earlier, we will bring back everything you know from KCD One and try to expand on that, make it make it more interesting. Try to add something here and there. So even the Farkle, uh has some new additions to it. Excellent. That is all the questions I've got for you today, Toby. I know that you're uh, you've got an interview. You've got an interview with Roxy coming up as well. I'm pretty sure she's going to press you quite a lot harder than I have. But you know, inter interviewing people is much more her thing than it is mine. <laughs> but thank you for giving us the time, Tobes. I really appreciate it, and uh, we are all like just super. We can't the level of excitement and anticipation for this game. I, I, do, I've certainly never been part of a community of a game where the anticipation was as big as it has been for this uh that's just... partly because of how my channel has grown but <laughs> because of this spe specific game but i i can't remember the last time i was this excited and certainly my community are just they're really itching to get their hands on well, that is that, that's definitely something that is really noteworthy for one of course thank you for inviting me and having me but generally i must say there's two things i would like to add to what you just said one I'm also extremely happy with our community because as, as far as I can see, uh, from it, it's a very friendly, welcoming, helpful community. So they're trying to discuss, they're trying to have fruitful conversations, even if the opinions differ, then from what I can see, people at least stay civil and nice to each other, which I think is a really good thing and unfortunately not 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 very common anymore in in many uh, communities so i'm really mm -hmm. happy to have you guys and uh and that you are so interested um then of course uh i mean your 500 hours uh kcd <laughs> review is still one of my most favorite uh videos out there and it, uh, it's not like it passed two million or something right views uh yeah but that's like extremely successful congrats 2 .1 million or something yeah yeah, uh, so um, I, I'm I'm really happy that that you are that you guys are still here with us, and um, last but not least, um, the announcement. How should I say that? I of course expected that there will be people out there who desperately waited for KCD two, and the moment they hear KCD two is coming, that they will freak out. But um, I'm positively surprised that how quick and good and in what kind of scope the KCD community uh, kind of woke up from their sleep and like immediately on a snap were on point like we're all back all I don't know let's yeah. all 200,000 people are immediately back or all, all six millions are Im immediately back they were immediately on the boat no one had hard feeling no one's no one said no one had a grudge nothing they were like immediately there everyone knew what's going on everyone spread out like evangelists and 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 convince their favorite streamers, hey, 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 there's this new game coming out. You should absolutely check it out. Yeah. Those guys never saw KCD before, have, have absolutely no idea who Warhorse is, who I am, or what, what KCD is about. And they all started to watch the announcement video and it spread like a wildfire, kind of. And that is something due to you guys, to the community that was snappy, was there right away from the first second. And uh, again, thank you for that, lifting my head um that was that was big that was really big for us to see yeah that. well i think i think what warhorse i think and i know a lot of my community think that what warhorse have really done right is the way you address the fans is is unlike any other game that i've come across uh i, I had a little bit of this with with the hard space shipbreaker community when i made some videos for those but but 
I don't think, other than Warhorse, I've never known anyone that handles the fan base uh, as well as Warhorse do. And 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 you're always willing to, to sort of talk, it's talk with the content creators. <laughs> it's just, the it's cool, just the great. Cool kids I know. Are doing, the, the young kids are doing this right now so hard. No. <laughs> no. Well, I, I mean, like... Um, uh, Lo I think I'm supposed to be talking to Logan maybe at some point, who I know has been to visit you today. Logan Hillier mm -hmm. uh, has been across, and I'm I'm hopefully going to try to talk to him. But but Luke as well, and you know Tom has you know spoken to to Roxy, and I know Luke has, and and mm -hmm. you just I think you're just so open and welcoming with the community, and I think that's what makes it such a great community to be a part of. And I I really do wish I understand some of the reasons, especially once you know the big. You know the rock stars. Nobody expects a company like Rockstar or Ubisoft to be mm. all over the fans. I get, I get that to some extent, but I, I do wish that I think more developers were more welcoming and open with the fans as you guys are. What I tried in the recent days, for instance, so of course the interest is very high among media, so all of them want an interview, which is all fine. But I uh, deliberately chose to put different people on different interviews simply because I exactly as you said why I love other companies and other games I, I sometimes find it a bit sad that maybe many people don't care but there's a group a core fan audience that actually does care about who's behind those games who are the Procops and the Daniels and the Tobys from the other studios and it's not so common that you actually learn a bit more about the team and the, the ideas and the reasonings and so on. And, and and that is what we tried since Kickstarter, which kind of that's where everything originated. At Kickstarter, you, of course, have to be more vocal anyway. Yeah, yeah, of course. But we wanted to keep this <laughs> friendly developer from next door feeling up until today as well, of course. Um, of course, things change and. Yeah, it's got to be a everyone bit more matures with and everything. Like, people, yeah. you know. Exactly, but uh, still, we're trying to be very communicative and open about things, and and if we can share something, we will absolutely do. And uh, yeah, I think well, that is that is the DNA of Warhorse. Yeah, well, you do it very well, and uh, and we are all really really excited. Uh, it's been great to talk to you, buddy. Thank you again. I don't know. I'm assuming. Hey. I want to know when you're next taking me and Roxy and Alex out to dinner. We're, we're going to have to pay this time. <laughs> oh, I, by the yeah. way, I, dre I, I sort of dressed for the occasion today, but I didn't. Oh, really. nice. There we have that. Oh. Prepared. I like that. I shouldn't like have put you. It gets so hot in this in this booth. <laughs> you could probably tell. Yeah, you tell me. It, the, weather's, the, 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 the weather is really good in Prague, which is nice, but I'm also like burning right now to crisp. Okay, buddy. Thank you very much, Toby. Uh, it's been great to have you here at the arcade, and I'm sure I'll chat to you some other way soon. Thank you very much for joining us. Take See care, you. everyone, and stay medieval. Thank you. There will be much more KCD2 content from me in the coming weeks and months, and I will even try to get a couple of other interviews in there if possible. But in the meantime, you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook or Patreon, or you can join the Knights Arcade community in the Sleepless Night Discord server and join the conversations that we're having over there. All of these things are linked in the video description or in the link section at the top of the Knights Arcade channel page. But until next time, from Knights Arcade... This is Sleepless Night, saying nighty-night.